Hello and welcome to MLC TV News. I'm reaching you live from the city of Lakoja, the Confluence City. I am Moino Balagu, and these are the headlines. Wife of the President Aisha Buhari joins calls for more women at NAS. Dangote Dantata appointed as members of Zakat Committee by Governor Gandaje. Ukraine reports over 2,000 civilian death in war with Russia. And Abrahamovich says he will sell Chelsea and send proceeds to Ukraine victims. And now the news in details. The call for an increase in the seats for women at the National Assembly received a boost as the First Lady Aisha Buhari stormed the legislative chambers to drum support for the clamor. Aisha Buhari had led a delegation to the National Assembly as part of advocacy for the proposed special seats for women in both the federal and state legislatives. In the team where the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainad Ame, her women affairs counterpart, Dame Pauline Tolin, and a delegation of Nigerian women. Aisha Buhari was in the National Assembly to witness the laying off of the report of the panel before the two chambers. The First Lady was received by the House of Representatives during its plenary session by the Deputy Speaker Idris Wase, who heads the Special Ad Hoc Committee for the Review of the 1999 Constitution, laid the report by the committee. Inside the report was a bill for an act to alter the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 to provide for special seats for women in the national and state houses of assembly and for related matters, which was the primary purpose of the First Lady's visit. One of the amendments to the 1999 Constitution is to create three seats for women in the National Assembly. The Stand Up for Women's Society, SWS, has rejected the position of the National Assembly on the gender bills that deliberately did not support any woman based actions. In a press release signed by the founder national president, Barrister Deborah Ijadele Adetona, SWS expressed disappointment and grievance at the actions of the Ninth National Assembly, NAS, when they denied women the opportunity of inclusion and representation in governance by voting against the gender bills. The NAS has spoken loud and clear that they do not want progress for society, mothers, aunties, sisters, wives, and for daughters. It is particularly sad that in a month globally dedicated to celebrating women worldwide, NASA has chosen to deny women basic human rights, saying these are rights enjoyed by every Nigerian except women. The proposed gender bills in the fifth constitutional alteration bills that were all rejected are bills targeted at addressing the current gender imbalance across the legislative arm of governments across the country whilst reducing the under representation of women in political office despite knowing that women has the highest population votes and participation in politics. According to SWS, men of the ninth NAS have reinforced the discrimination and political bias against women as enshrined in the 1999 constitution by denying citizenship to foreign-born husband of an Nigerian woman while it allows Nigerian men foreign-born wives to be awarded automatic citizenship. Ijadele Adetona noted that the actions of the lawmakers undermine the importance and relevance of women's contribution to the governance of the Nigerian, vice versa the key role women play to bring victory to political parties in elections at all levels across the country. SWS demands that all gender bills be reconsidered. Ultimately, our demands will benefit not just women, but Nigerians as a whole arguing that more women in governance will bring about progress and desired respect for Nigeria in the Committee of Nations. The SWS president noted that they cannot in 2022 be negotiating the rights of women and the sanctity of the dignity of girls. We therefore all call on the National Assembly to revisit these bills as a matter of urgency and ensure that they are passed as soon as possible. The barrister went ahead to call on the women to learn from what happened and lobby the men early enough. She noted that the lack of early lobbying cost the women the accent by the legislators. SWS leader, however, commended the wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, for fronting the advocacy visit to the National Assembly. Barrister Deborah also commended legislators for item 7, a bill for an act to alter the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria in 1999 to require the president and governors to submit names of nominated ministers and commissioners within 30 days of taking oath of office for confirmation. By the Senate, 
of State House of Assembly provide reserved quota for women and related matters past 289 votes a yes. The National Union of Electricity Employees has berated the National Assembly over the Electricity Bill 2022, which among others tends to monopolize the generation, transmission and distribution of electricity supply in the country. Speaking against the backdrop of the state governor's rejection of the bill through the Nigerian Governor's Forum NGF, President Martin Suzogu said they are stakeholders in the sector, a major stakeholder as a matter of fact. As workers in the sector, they were not informed or invited to the public hearing. This is why a lot of things are going wrong in the country today. Even when they do not have the capacity, the government wants to appropriate everything. Just like when some people are pushing to remove labor from the exclusive list to concurrent list, when the norm and practice everywhere is that labor is on the exclusive list. In this case, power cannot and should not be on the executive exclusive list. We should avoid propagating what should undermine our economy and well-being. They are not going to support any monopoly in the electricity sector because we all know that monopoly has done to us today. The privatization in the sector is merely a transfer of public monopoly to private monopoly today. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has registered 113 252 new voters in Kogi State through the ongoing continuous voters' registration. The State Resident Electoral Commissioner, Professor James Appam, who announced this in Lokoja, said the new voters comprised of 50,000 males and 62,000 females. He said that the new voters were registered between June last year and March 2nd. But with the new 113,000 voters, the state now has a million plus voters. According to APAN, the commission has also carried out what he called the expansion of voter access exercise under which previous voting points were converted to fully-fledged polling units and removed them to places that were undeserved. With the successful completion of the exercise, he said Kogi State, which had hit had 2,500 plus polling units, now 3,500 plus polling units. To this end, he said teams had been dispatched to all registration areas in the state to register new voters and to enable those already registered to transfer voting points and upgrade their personal information. According to APAM, the display of voters' registration for claim and objection will hold from March 26th and end on the 1st of April. The resident electoral commissioner explained clearly that INEC had nothing to do with what is going on in some internet cafes in the state. In his closing remark, the administrative secretary, Abubakar Sadiq, commended the stakeholders for their presence, assuring that the commission will continue to collaborate and cooperate with stakeholders for peaceful, free fair elections in 2023. A former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Atai Rujega, says Nigeria is in the process of collapse. Jega said this in Abuja at the 2022 Workers' Political Conference organized by the Nigerian Labour Congress. He described the 2023 general elections as critical for Nigeria's unity and an epochal moment which could pull Nigeria from the precipice. Jega, who supervised the 2011 and 2015 general elections, said the state of the socio-economic conditions under which the Nigerian working class operates is saddening. He maintained that Nigerians have continued to be victims of the reckless misrule of a tiny rapid and reckless band of elites. The former INEC boss added that a broad alliance of progressive forces for national rescue and emancipation was required to get Nigeria out of the current unwholesome predicament in which it finds itself. Women across the three senatorial districts of Kogi State under the umbrella of Yaya Bello Network YBN Mobilizer Initiative have resolved that Governor Yaya Bello is their preferred candidate for president in 2023. The women who organized the road walk in Lokoja also held a town hall meeting to reaffirm their commitment and support for the governor because his administration has continued to empower youths and women by appointing them to man-sensitive quarters which have never been recorded in the history of Kogi State. The convener said that they will not doubt his capacity to involve more women when elected in Nigeria, president in 2023. The governor was represented by the secretary to the state government, Dr. Folashade Ayuade. Our reporter has more.
Women under the umbrella of Yahya Belu Network Door to Door Women Mobilizers join the rest supporters of Governor Yahya Belu for President 2023 across Nigeria in his solidarity work. After the work was a town hall meeting that attracted top government officials, NGOs, market women and youths across the states. The women said Governor Belo has done immeasurable well to women more than what is applicable in other states. They listed amongst reasons why Governor Belo remained their choice a higher rate of empowerment he has given to women and youth appointments and made possible the election of women as vice chairpersons in all the 21 local governments in Kogi states. He also created an enabling environment that allowed women to lead as council leaders. The organizers, Abu Bakr Fatima and Sandra Mimi Musa, said they have not had it so good since the creation of Kogi States. He has quite shown us love as women. It is only pertinent that we repay the love by voting a mass for him as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His Excellency Al Haji Aya Dozabelu to Nigerian women. And we choose to start. From our home because as it is said charity begins at home his excellency has done a lot for women giving us enough space to for the world to see us to understand that women are not just pushed aside or for the other room but can actively partake in politics and make a difference and so we want all nigerian women to know that project PYB, which is President Yaya Adosa Belo 2023, is the best deal. I think that Yaya Belo should be the president of Nigeria because he is the most gender sensitive governor. If you look at Kogi State, the SLG to Kogi State is a woman. And we have so many SSA, SA, head of uh, prostatas that are women. So that is why we think if Yaya Belo becomes the president of Nigeria, his government is going to favor the women. The Kogi Head of Service, Hannah Odio, Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Development, Fatima Buba Kabir, Director General Pension Commission, Mariam Abedo, and Special Advisor Project Monitoring, Ochidi Usman, commended YBN women for coming out to support the man who they described as the people's choice. <laughs> Through that, 
We are saying this not because it's so holistic, but we are saying it because we know that only problem in Nigeria is facing today is insecurity. When there is insecurity in the country, it will affect the economics. The market women will not be able to go to market. The, the business men will not be able to go to the market. The farmers will not be able to go to market. That is why we are appealing to Nigeria to forget about the zone, to forget about the way it comes, yes, but to look the quality of the leadership that we require in Nigeria. Dialect conversation in Nupi and Hausa were entertained from key appointees to further inform the uninformed about what the governor is doing, especially in areas of security, education, health sector, and other infrastructure developments that demands their readiness to canvass for him to be supported to contest for 2023 presidential election. They said they are sure, if elected, he will do even more to build the new Nigeria the people want. The secretary to the state government, Folashade Ayuade, on behalf of the governor, appreciated the women who came out and promise not to disappoint them. There is a 300 best place in Okede Central Senatorial District with diagnostic system that no co guides will have to travel abroad for any medical treatments. Neighboring states will be coming to Kogi for medical attention. It's replicated in all the other two senatorial districts. She told them that the governor is a lover of people who hates tribalism, nepotism, religious bigotry, and embraces gender equality with a practical example in his appointment made so far. The new university coaster will soon start College of Medicine. And before they start, the reference hospital is there already as teaching hospital. Preserve your Parker University as the teaching hospital almost completed. All the vice chairmen must be women. Today in Pokemon State, all the 21 local government areas the women. College of Education Technical is a woman. The A woman. We have a lot of special advisors. Additional one just last week. She was hired to us. She's from Ondo States. I need to let you know. She is from Ondo States. And she's a special advisor on concepts and actualization. In Kogi States. Falashade advised women should come out in their numbers to rally around Governor Bello to build a better society and a new Nigeria where women and youth are allowed to express themselves towards building the nation, where security will become people's rights that will attract development and investment through investors into the country. <laughs> Jane Gia Balagbubu, reporting for MLC TV. The National Industrial Court has ordered Kogi State Local Government Service Commission to recall a dismissed staff member, Munirat Idris. The court also declared the dismissal of the claimant over alleged fake certificate as unlawful. The living judgment, Justice Oyebiola Oyewumi held that Idris was not given fair hearing as required by law before her dismissal. The judge stated that the failure of the commission to consider the letters from the claimant's institution addressed to it affirming the originality of the claimant's certificate was wrong. She further held that it was still the certificate that formed the foundation upon which the claimant was dismissed. The court therefore made a consequential order for Idris to be placed back in a former position in the commission. The court in addition ordered that the defendant to pay all the claimant's salaries from the date of her dismissal till date. From facts, the claimant Idris had contended that her dismissal by the commission was grossly unjust, unlawful, improper and wrongful. She submitted that the defendant dismissed her over-alleged fake result which her school had affirmed its originality. The claimant further submitted that all efforts to be reinstated proved abortive, hence instituting the suit. 
The court is part after listening to both parties dismiss the defendant's objections for lack of merit and affirm the jurisdiction of the court to hear the matter. Oyewumi further held that there was nothing to exhibit Q to show that the defendant considered the said subsequent letters exhibit Q5 and Q9 before dismissing the claimant. Governor Abdullahi Gandaje has appointed Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, his uncle, Aminu Dantata, and of the Samad Rabiu as members of the state Zakat and Hopsi Commission. Zakat refers to the obligation that a Muslim has to donate a certain proportion of wealth each year to charitable courses. This is contained in a statement by the Commissioner for Information, Mohamed Garba. Other members are Abdul Motal, Ahmed as Commissioner 1, Loy Sheikh Atik, Commissioner 2 of the Commission. The development is sequel to the approval of the Kano State Executive Council that reconstituted the Board of Kano, Zakat and Hobsi Commission with Ibrahim Muzam Mashbushiri as Executive Chairman. Other members include representatives of the five Emirate Councils in the state, representatives of the Ministry of Information, Ministry of Religious Affairs, as well as Komi Rimi, Quarry and Singer Markets, respectively. The Commissioner also announced that the Council has approved the establishment of Committee for Screening of International Islamic Organizations. Professor Sani Zaradin, the Chief Imam of Kano World Service Chairman, Mohammed Adamu, Commissioner for Religious Affairs, Co Chairman, and Awulu Yakasai of Secretary. Well, now I'm going on a short break. We'll be right back for more. Please do stay with us. Every country has its peculiar system of government. In Nigeria, we practice democracy, and this is applicable in some countries across the globe, including the United States of America. What is democracy? It is the government of the people, by the people and for the people. In the political arena, we are ready to explain how we play politics in Nigeria and other countries. The challenge of power shift syndrome, how it has impacted or affected the people. How can we make it better for all? Join Fatima Yakub on Melkite TV online every Saturday by 9 p.m. to discourse and examine all about the politics and the power that be. Mr. President, I was once there as an opposition senator. There was never a time that we called the president at that time, who was a PDP president, an insult because this is our institution. And if we don't conduct ourselves with dignity and respect, nobody will respect us. The heads of security in Nigeria made several different explanations for killings of our citizens. The constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby forward for the, for the confirmation by the Senate the appointment of the underlisted nominees as national commissioners and resident electoral commissioner for the independent national electoral commission, INEC. To watch or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Melkite TV. Like our Facebook page, MLC TV, and follow us on our Instagram, MLC TV 2021. We are here to inform, educate, and to criticize constructively. Don't miss it. Glad to have you back with us. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has extended felicitations to the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God RCCG, Pastor Enoch Dejari Adeboye, on the occasion of his 80th birthday. The Governor, in a statement made available to journalists by his Chief Press Secretary, Onogu Mohammed, described the respected clergyman as a bridge builder and a blessing to his generation. That the Gio, as many of us fondly call him, has not only contributed to lives through his ministry work, but his empowerment of people and nurturing them into nation builders. I'm always wowed by the simplicity and sense of humility of this man of influence. His good works are testimonies of his divine calling, impacting greatly on humanity, education, health and infrastructural development. It is no doubt that Pastor Adeboye is a blessing to Nigeria and the entire globe. 
I salute his dedication to calling and service to God. And it is my prayer that the Almighty God will continue to bless him with good health, strength and many more years of impact. I join people across different parts of the world to celebrate an icon, teacher, religious leader on the attainment of 80. Governor Pele also pray that God Almighty will spare the life of Pastor Deboye to witness more and continually reward him of the immense contributions to lives across the globe. Kogi State Governor, His Excellency Yaya Bello has felicitated with the people of Borno Emirate on the 9th, 13th anniversary of Abubakar Umar Galba as Sheikh of Borno. Gabai, a member of Kenami dynasty, was officially appointed the 14th Shehu of the Emirate on the 2nd of March 2009, Shehu Mustafa Umar of blessed memory. However, Governor Bello lauded the traditional ruler for his sagacity and unwavering commitment to the people of the Emirate, even in the face of Boko Haram insurgency that nearly turned the one-time peaceful state to a hot hub of conflict. As every generation will have a mission to fulfill, I am glad that 13 years on, Shehu Gabai has continued to work consistently to make life easy for the people of the Emirate. He was also not deterred by the criminal activities of Boko Haram terrorists who wanted to render the state a Wharton Zone, a statement issued by Bello's Chief Press Secretary, Onogu Mohamed Red. Bello expressed joy that the Emirate and Bono State is fast healing from injuries caused by the terrorists, that peace is restored to the land. Speaking further, the governor prayed that the Almighty Allah will preserve the life of the traditional ruler in wealth, wisdom and sound health. And in politics, speculations that the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, had agreed on zoning formula and that President Muhammad Buhari settled for a candidate to become the national chairman of the party were disregarded by the governor, my Malaboni led caretaker extraordinary convention committee which raised a committee to come up with a zoning formula. National Secretary of the CECPC, Don Akpanudoche, in a statement announced Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak as chairman of the committee, with Deputy President of the Senate Ovie Omuagege as deputy chairman and Deputy Governor of Anambra State Nkemo Keke as secretary. Members of the committee include Professor Etim Nyong, M.B. Shehu, Mustafa Salihu, Teslim Folarin, and Sadiq Sami. The committee is expected to submit its report on the 7th of March. Although the terms of reference of the committee were not immediately listed, it was gathered that the CECPC will avail the committee of all necessary details as soon as possible. A top party source said the committee is essentially to work out a zoning formula which would be looked into by the CECPC for possible adoption. The development effectively neutralizes reports credited to Governor Nasri El Rafai of Kaduna State on the party's zoning formula as the CECPC has now taken ownership of the process. It also put paid to speculations that President Buhari might have endorsed a former governor, Abdullah Adamu of Nasara State, as consensus national chairmanship candidate. Meanwhile, amid claims that President Buhari might have endorsed one of the 12 national chairmanship aspirants of the APC ahead of its March 26 national convention, one of the aspirants and former Governor Al-Sharif of Borno State has pledged to abide by any such decision. Addressing journalist Sharif, who dismissed reports of any endorsement, said while he remained in the race, he would not However, go against any decision taken by the President, Muhammad Buhari, the leader of the party. He said of late, I have been inundated by insinuations and rumors that President Buhari has zoned and endorsed a candidate for this all-important position in our party's leadership. Another chairmanship aspirant, Malam Saliu Mustafa, also dismissed reports of any agreement on consensus candidacy. And now to foreign news, an investigation into possible war crimes in Ukraine has been launched after Russia was accused of bombing civilians. The International Criminal Court ICC chief prosecutor said evidence was being collected on alleged war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. It came after 39 nations called for an inquiry to be opened. Cities including the capital Kyiv, Kharkiv, 
and cursing have come under heavy shelling in recent days. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has already accused Moscow of war crimes after it launched airstrikes on the country's second city of Kharkiv, killing civilians. On Wednesday, the mayor of Kherson said Russian forces had seized control of the key port, the first major city to be taken by Moscow since it invaded a week ago. Earlier this week, the ICC's chief prosecutor, Karim Khan, said he planned to open an investigation into events in Ukraine as rapidly as possible, but the referral from 39 nations, including the UK, France, Germany, allowed it to be launched without the need for judicial approval. He will look at past and present allegations of war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide, and will go as far back as 2013 before Russia's annexation of Crimea the following year. The ICC prosecutes individuals accused of the most serious crimes concerning the international community where the states cannot or are unwilling to do so. Ukraine State Emergency Service has said more than 2,000 civilians have been killed since the Russian in invasion began last Thursday, although the figure has not been independently verified. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees said some one million people had already fled the country. On Wednesday, the UN General Assembly voted overwhelmingly to demand an immediate end to the invasion of Ukraine. Just four countries, Belarus, North Korea, Eritrea, Syria, joined Russia in opposing a motion calling for the withdrawal of all forces while 35 nations abstained. The UN had previously spoken of 142 civilian deaths. President Vladimir Putin ordered a long-feared invasion of Ukraine on Thursday. Since then, more than 400 fires caused by enemy fire have been extinguished, according to the statement. The emergency service also said that 500 people have been brought to safety. Referring to ongoing attacks, it warned that every hour cost the lives of our children, women and defenders. However, Russian efforts to encircle Kharkiv have slowed, with one U.S. official saying a huge Russian convoy to the north of the capital had barely moved all day despite continued aerial bombardment of the city. And now to sports news. Chelsea owner Roman Abramovich on Wednesday confirmed he will sell the Premier League club amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russian billionaire Abramovich has decided it is the, in the best interest of the Champions League holders if he parts ways with the club he has transformed since his purchase in 2003. Chelsea have won 19 major trophies in the Abramovich era, including their first two Champions League crowns and five Premier League titles. But the 55-year-old's reign will come to an end following the fallout from the Russian invasion. The British government have yet to order sanctions against Abramovich, who is said to be close to Russian President Vladimir Putin. But the Chelsea owner's concern about potential season of assets is said to have sparked his move to offload the Blues. Abramovich, who made a rare appearance to watch Chelsea win the club, Cup in Abu Dhabi recently has also pledged to donate any net proceeds from the sale to help the victims of the war in Ukraine. The sale of the club will not be fast-tracked but will follow due process. Ibrahimovic said he will not be asking for any loans to be repaid. This has never been about business nor money for me but about pure passion for the game and club. Moreover, I have instructed my team to set up a charitable foundation where all net proceeds from the sale will be donated. The foundation will be for the benefit of all victims of the war in Ukraine. This includes providing critical funds towards urgent and immediate needs of victims as well as supporting the long-term work of recovery. And that is the size of our package today. Join us tomorrow at this same hour to watch our news as we give you updates and happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malachi TV. Like and follow us on our Facebook page, MLC TV, Instagram, MLC TV 2021. 
Twitter at MLCTV1 for your event coverage, information, contribution, advert and sponsorship. Please call any of the numbers now displayed on your screen. Join us Friday and Saturday to watch our special programs, Friday 9pm, Local Government and You, Saturday 7pm, Family Affairs and Saturday 9pm, Political Arena. It's Malachite TV reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Mwono Balagogo. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Good evening and see you tomorrow.